Raw Report. Becky Lynch and Nia Jax. Did you watch this show, Tom? Yes, I watched the Hulu version. All right. Well, tell me what they didn't include on Hulu. So Becky faced Nia, and it was a very good match. And I, you know, I was like, "Uh, I don't know about this. Who cares? But it ended up being a very good match. And uh, the big spot at the end is Becky tries a spot. Nia punches her in the face. (laughs) They did the face breaker. It was awesome, though. They had the, the blood capsule and Becky's bleeding everywhere. There's another change. And uh, she ends up getting sat on and pinned. Clean in the middle. Nia beat her clean in the middle. So my presumption is that Becky wins the Rumble. Rhea and Nia at Royal Rumble. Becky beats Nia at Elimination Chamber. And Becky faces Rhea at WrestleMania. I think that's where they're going. I agree. Thanks, Tom. Appreciate it. They recapped the American Nightmare Before Christmas, the one where Shinsuke rhymed nitwit with inbred. I was so aghast when I heard that. Like, this guy's sending like poems to the granny show? Because that's horrible. Cody did a promo. Nakamura basically told him, I will finish your story and close your book next week. So I guess that's the big blow-off match is next week. We had Kofi and Jey Uso against Vinci and Kaiser. This did not make the Hulu cut. Okay, well. For reasons that I am aware of. Yeah, Giovanni goes for a springboard high cross, and Kofi freaking booted this guy right in the face, and that was the end of him. And the referee stopped it. The doctor's in the ring. They checked on Vinci. Vinci later said that he was fine, but uh, they did stop the match, and then they actually announced Kofi and Jay the winners via referee stoppage, which... I mean, that's what happened. That is what happened. I mean, is Ridge going to come out tonight on New Year's Evil and lay claim to defeating Ilya Dragunov? I don't know what they're doing A few weeks ago, right? Yeah, where is this guy? He should be back tonight. He should be back tonight angry. Like, you made me feel so bad and then you're fine? Got an Ivy Nile video package, which was good. We got the worst thing on the show. It was a total old school WWE. Miz TV with Judgment Day, but truth comes out. And to be fair, like, he did win a match. He is technically supposed to be in Judgment Day. But then they announce it is Miz and Truth versus JD and Dom. And then, you know, Truth acts like, well, I should be on the Judgment Day team. So he's trying to tag into JD and Dom, even though, you know, Miz is his partner. And then finally, Dom's like, all right, you want to be on the team? Fine, punch your partner. So he goes to punch his partner, but he accidentally hits Miz. I'm sorry, he accidentally hits JD. Miz hits JD with these skull-crushing finale pins him. A dumb segment. Like, minutes on end of my life, I'll never, ever get back. That was bitter. Kane and Katana video package. Crowd like the Miz. Yeah, great. Chelsea and Piper showed up. They're doing a rematch next week. You're such a oh, troll. <laughs> they did! You're an incredible troll. <laughs> Well, what, do you think they're going to love Dom? Of course they cheered The Miz. What, they're going to get behind J.D. McDonald's? No? I wonder if Jay White's ever punched him. Rhea and Ivy for the women's title. I thought this was a... I thought I thought Ivy did a great job. And really, there was one botch spot in this match. And I think it was Rhea's fault. Because they did an over-under spot in the corner... And I got botched, and then they were like doing something in the corner, and Rhea apologized to her. So I think I think Rhea's timing was off. So Ivy, I mean, you know, she's a NXT product. Most of her matches, I'm sure, they spent a week practicing for getting on TV. This one was live. I don't. I presume they didn't spend a week going over it. I thought she did an excellent job in this match, and the fans didn't believe she could win, but they did get into it. They chanted, "This is awesome." They chanted, "Let's go, Ivy." And uh, Rhea ends up headbutting her out of midair. Riptide oh. pins her. It was a good match. Good showing yeah. by Ivy. The headbutt at the finish was sick. Yeah. And like we talked about earlier, I think that you can attribute a good portion of the crowd getting behind Ivy Nile to the work that they did behind the scenes with her in the show leading up to the match. Because we had a vignette of her doing dips yeah. off the arm of 
one of the creeds as the creed brothers and the alpha academy sat there cheering her on which by the way if i was working out i would absolutely hate to have them sitting there yelling at me yeah backstage and then they showed a video package of her so uh i enjoyed the match i enjoyed both uh both of the women's matches on this show i thought they were both very good we had the Jinder Rock segment, which went very long. And so Zoe and Shayna versus Natty and Tegan, number one contenders match. Totally rushed. No heat. It's like they had to follow the Rock. Zoe hit the Z360 on Tegan, got the pin. So it looks like they'll face the winners of the rematch for the tag titles that's taking place next week on Raw. And then the main event was Seth and Drew McIntyre for the world title, which was a very good match. Went through two commercial breaks, got a lot of time. And finally, uh, Drew kicked out of the pedigree. Judgment Day's music hits. The referee is distracted. JD clonks Seth behind the referee's back. And Priest decides now's the time to uh, cash in. Pri- Priest hit him with the briefcase. Well, I thought it was JD. No, Priest hit Rollins with the briefcase. All right, somebody as, here uh, uh, confirm, because I, I think Tom's got fake news. No. I think it's false information. No. Somebody went to, with the ref, they took the other ref to cash in. Priest nailed him with the briefcase. And then Priest got hit with a Claymore yes. by Drew McIntyre. Drew starts Drew- taking out all the heels and gets a big baby face pop. Well, this guy's six foot eight, 300 pounds of muscle. He's flying around like a whirling dervish. How can you not cheer him on? Okay, so the chat has confirmed that I was right. JD was not out there. It was only Dom and Damien. So it was <laughs> Damien that hit him with that briefcase. Shut up! So then Seth hits a uh, stomp, and he goes for the cover, but the foot's on the ropes. He he pulls back so... What a noob. He pulls back so <laughs> deep that he puts the guy's foot on the ropes himself. Now he's mad. And he, he goes outside. He clears off the announce table. But Seth counters, hits a pedigree, the table's supposed to break, but it's like one of those Japanese tables. It does nothing. And so, you know, the, they don't have time. They got like 30 seconds left. Throws the guy in the ring, stomps him, pins him, and that was the end of the main event. So Seth moving on next week to old Punk, CM Punk, which, man, that's going to be interesting. Can you imagine if Punk is expecting the main event of Mania and then Rock waltzes in again and Rock is like the main event of night one and Cody and Roman the main event of night two and Punk's not the main event? Well, you know, things happen in this business and it's happened to everybody. So we'll see what happens. That's the Raw show. See, Brandon here says, you were right. It was Priest. Thank you. I'm not doing this. <laughs> doing what? You know the... Uh... Eh, I'm not going to bother with that one. What do you think about the return of Connor? Well, it was either going to be... 185? Yeah, I don't know what's up with that. It was either going to be been lifting here... weights. Sure. You mentioned Randy Orton yesterday. Yeah. Or on your show. You mentioned Randy Orton. Who else? AJ. AJ's back gigantic. Connor, you could throw him in there. Yeah. In the list of Endeavor TKO athletes coming off an injury, being in the best shapes of their of their lives. But International Fight Week, it was either going to be then or UFC 300 if they wanted to pull out the big guns for that show. But it appears it'll be this summer. So I'm sure everybody's going to have their eyes glued to his return, but realistically, I think his days as a top level championship <laughs> don't fighter say, are done. God, I was yeah, looking at his. A- I was looking at his record the other day, and the last time that he won a fight, okay, the last time that he won a fight was uh, January 18, twenty twenty. Okay, it's now January twenty twenty four. He hasn't won a fight in four. Years, okay? Now, that fight that he won against Donald Cerrone was, uh, it was 40 seconds. Like, he just went in there and blitzed him, okay? And you know, Tom, you know, we've seen the people that get the big blitz and everything like that. You don't really know how good you are until you've you put in some time, right? Correct. The last time he put in time and won a fight was 
November 12, 2016. That's the last time. Against Nate Diaz. No, it was Eddie Alvarez. Oh. It was Nate Diaz was the decision prior to that. But, yeah, aside from the blitz over Cerrone, he has not won a match since November of 2016. Eight years ago, with the exception of that uh, quick win over Cerrone. So. Hey, if you love this clip, have I got a deal for you. WrestlingObserver.com. You have a commute? Do you work out at the gym? Do you like listening to audio on your headphones or your earbuds or whatever the kids use today? Well, WrestlingObserver.com will give you all the audio you'll ever need in your life. Over 15,000 audio shows. Every audio show that we have ever done, dating back to 2005, is available for subscribers at WrestlingObserver.com. Every time a new show comes out, you can podcast it directly to your phone. If you have a commute... As noted, if you go to the gym, if you like to lift weights and listen to Granny review soap operas, well, WrestlingObserver.com gets you full access to all of these shows and all of these archives. You can go back and listen to TNA reviews from 2010. You can go back and listen to reviews of every WWE pay-per-view, every big story that's ever happened in wrestling. You can get access to that at WrestlingObserver.com. Plus, full access to the Wrestling Observer newsletter every week. 40,000 words of news and information in pro wrestling. Why get all your scoops off Reddit, which aren't even accurate most of the time? Go right to the source, the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. You also get Observer Archives dating back to 1990. So check it out today. Thousands of issues of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Tens of thousands of hours of audio. All for $12.99 per month or as low as $9.99 if you sign up for a year. You'll never, you'll never run out of audio if you subscribe to WrestlingObserver.com. So head up there, check it out today, and I'll talk to you again after a while.